I'm going to start with a learning check because we haven't done enough this week. Um, so pause and answer these four questions, put them in your homework, and I will go over the answers so that you have them. How many sperm made from one primary spermatocyte? It's going to be four. How many ova are made from one primary oocyte? One. Secondary oocytes are haploid, and there are two polar bodies produced during oogenesis. Great. Okay, let's go on to talk about follicular genesis, which is a distinct process from oogenesis, although they do happen at the same time. Um, they're separate processes to talk about. We'll refer back to oogenesis as we talk about follicular genesis. Follicular genesis, folliculogenesis, is the production of a follicle within your ovaries. A follicle, follicle is a layer of cells that surround an oocyte. Fol at least that's what a follicle is in the ovary. So the supporting cells that support and um, the development of the oocyte, those are going to be follicle cells. So somewhat similar to our Sertoli cells in the sperm. Within the ovary here, there is, this is an ovary, this whole thing. And these little, all this little stuff in here, and see even these little tiny ones, these are primordial follicles. These contain a primary oocyte. We're going to have development of these follicles, meaning they're going to get larger, add cells, grow, and that's going to occur eventually the oocytes can become a secondary oocyte. The follicle will also change its name too. Um, eventually, you're going to have a mature follicle um, as well as with a secondary oocyte. So that's kind of our end game here, a mature follicle. What does that mean it's going to do? It's about to rupture and release its contents. Its contents is the secondary oocyte. That is called ovulation when it's going to release its contents, right? So we're going to walk through the process of what happens to the follicle. And in that, I'll tell you what's happening to the oocyte as well. There's not as many changes that happen to the oocyte because you know the oocyte stays a secondary oocyte until fertilization. So there's not as many changes. The follicle is going to change more than the egg itself. So we're going to start with um, reviewing oogenesis. I'm actually going to pause the video and draw this in because I went through this in the other video. Um, so I'm just going to add it here quickly. So here is our oogenesis on top here. All review. You've seen this before. So we're going to look and see what happens with the follicle during this time. Well, first, it's pretty easy. I am going to draw the um, oocyte in there, but then I'm not going to be tell you what changes are with it because that's happening up here. So the oogonium is going to be surrounded by a primordial follicle. I need a new color here. I'm going to do uh, light blue. This is going to be surrounded by a thin and single layer of cells called granulosa cells. These cells make up the follicle. That's basically all there is to it at this point. And I'm not going to draw nuclei on all of these. But remember that for cells, just want to remind you of that. Um, so these are our granulosa cells. Granulosa cells. And our follicle is going to remain a primordial follicle until after puberty. So we've got our primordial follicle. So even when it's a primary oocyte, at first it's still going to contain be a primordial follicle. Um, as puberty, we get close to puberty, somewhere around here we are going to start building up those cells around the oocyte. So here I'm going to go after puberty. 
and we're going to draw multiple layers of granulosa cells. They become kind of cuboidal, actually, so that granulosa cells, I'm going to say, becoming cuboidal throughout kind of childhood towards puberty. I'm not going to draw every single step that happens, right? It's a process, a process. Um, but by this point, um, but just after puberty, we're going to have multiple layers of, yeah, I'm drawing them a bit bigger because they're cuboidal. These are still granulosa cells. And yes, their function will become important. They have nuclei in them. Um, you also start to develop then another layer of cells around the granulosa cells. Um, again, this is a process, so this might happen a little bit you know, after the layers of granulosa cells start to develop these thin layers. And actually, let's just I'm gonna draw them like this. These are theca cells. Um, okay. So that is become a larger thing, right? This is now going to be um, actually our secondary follicle. So pretty much our prim primary follicle, I'm not gonna ask you to distinguish between primary and primordial. Um, our primary follicle is kind of a single layer of cuboidal granulosa cells, granulosa cells. Here, this is now our secondary follicle. Now that it has these two different cell types on them. These granulosa cells, as now they're big, they're cuboidal. What do cuboidal cells do? They produce stuff. Um, they can secrete or absorb things. These ones are going to secrete fluid. That's what this is supposed to be. They're going to secrete fluid into this space here. And they're going to, um, it's going to result in the development of what's called an antrum. And antrum is going to be a space that surrounds our oocyte. Still a second, uh, still a primary oocyte. Still a primary oocyte. My timing is a bit. off here. All right, we're good. Basically what you gotta do is know that um, at puberty, this first meiosis one doesn't happen immediately. It's not gonna happen until the follicle is ready. So if you can be okay with this, um, I drew this up here because this can happen as soon as puberty begins. Um, but this whole thing, I'm gonna circle it in a different color. I'll tell you, we, we don't know where it happens, right? We're not there yet. This is going to happen after we get to the um, mature follicle. To become a mature follicle. So it's actually going to happen kind of right here. Okay, so let me keep drawing my, where are we? What am I drawing here? I'm drawing a tertiary follicle, which is almost mature. And it's going to have granulosa cells, one layer around this oocyte. and then multiple layers, just like before around the antrum. So the only difference now, I'm drawing my cells a little messier, is that that antrum has built up. That is, the importance of that is it's fluid that's going to cause pressure to build up. And this one should be a little bigger, right? The whole thing does get a little bigger as well. Pressure is gonna build up in that follicle. So we've got a tertiary follicle. I'm not gonna quiz you on the stages of follicles. 
um, in terms of being picky about primary, secondary, tertiary. We care about a mature follicle, for sure. At this point, see my arrow coming in, meiosis two is going to happen. Just to emphasize that even more, it's the same thing as what happened up there. So now what's inside here? A haploid cell, the other polar body, right? Which we've shown up here is dismissed. And then we still have the granulosa cells surrounding and the antrum. I don't really have space even to make it big enough. The antrum's gotten really, really big. Um, I wish I could draw this whole thing bigger. We'll draw a whole lot of granulosa cells just so at least you can see. The follicle's gonna get bigger, right? You saw that in that previous slide of the ovary. Follicles get big as they mature. The bigness comes from both granulosa cells, um, dividing, multiplying, enlarging, producing more fluid and the fact that they're producing more fluid, um, putting that fluid into the antrum, and the fecal cells are also dividing. Okay, here is our antrum full of fluid. That fluid, there's a lot of pressure in here, it's going to burst. So this follicle is going to literally rupture. I'm gonna to have to move myself here and use this space up here. We're going to have rupture of the follicle. The follicle itself is going to become what's called a corpus luteum. It's gonna be the remnants of the follicle. And of course, our so here's our oocyte, still still a secondary oocyte. It hasn't been fertilized yet. It might be fertilized soon. So the primary oocyte is released into the actually the peritoneal cavity, where it's going to be picked up by the fallopian tube. Um, that's a that's a kind of a cool thing. The fallopian tube has these little fimbriae that make waves and allow the egg to pass into the fallopian tube. And the follicle is now like, actually, I don't want that color. I want the blue to represent that this was granulosa cells. It's kind of like, it's got some cells there still, but it is ruptured and broken up. Um, it's no longer a follicle. What is, what is it? It is the corpus luteum or luteum. Luteum. It's the body that's left over from the follicle. So these have become separated. The oocyte lives about 24 hours. Hopefully we'll travel down the fallopian tube and depending on whether what your life situation is, um, either hopefully will be fertilized by a sperm and complete meiosis to, to become a zygote and then implant in the uterus, or it will not be fertilized, which happens more often than, than not. It will end up just dying and um, it's very small. It'll be excreted out with the menses that happen each month. And so that's it for follicular genesis. We actually are gonna do this again though. <laughs> we're gonna do this with the, the um, menstrual cycle, the ovarian cycle, we're gonna put this all together. Hormones, follicular genesis, um, oogenesis, and uterine lining changes that are important to promote pregnancy. Um, or if pregnancy doesn't happen, then that lining is, is shed each month in our species.